Good morning and welcome to the week ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 14th of February 2020 and the time has just gone 11.35 GMT. And I'm looking ahead to next week, which is Monday the 17th of the Friday the 21st of February. Now, before we discuss uh, the events of next week, uh, let's take a quick roundup of the, of the events of this week. Then I'll look at a few uh, of the most popular markets, indices and foreign exchange pairs. And then I'll talk about uh, the, big, the big events of next week. And I will have covered some of the, uh, the markets that are likely to impact uh, in the middle of the, uh, the video. Um, so this week, uh, well, today's session has been reasonably quiet as far as well, equity markets and currency markets go. Uh, this week, we've seen a few ups and, ups and downs. Earlier in the week, there was initial signs out of China. Uh, that the coronavirus tragedy was showing signs of slowing down. That got turned on its head uh, when the medical authorities in China uh, kind of changed the methodology of how they actually determine um, people, determine uh, cases of infection. And then when they did those changes, they actually realized the situation was far worse than actually it was initially thought. So we saw a bit of a turnaround on that. Uh, that happened, say, yesterday. Um, today, the markets are a bit subdued, but unfortunately, the crisis has gotten worse. Um, that's been kind of balanced off by the fact that there are some aspects of the Chinese economy which are, go which are going back to business, uh, but there's still a bit of uncertainty around that. Uh, and already, we're starting to hear you know, noises coming out of companies that have either operations in China or else um, supply, supply sources coming from China. Uh, they're saying that, that they're, they're cautioning already that uh, future earnings future earnings could be impacted uh, depending on the severity of the situation. Uh, in terms of political news and also big news for the currency markets yesterday, uh, there was a, a shock announcement uh, but the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Sajid Javid, um, surprisingly announced his resignation and then he it was announced then uh, that he was to be re he's, he's replaced um, by uh, the relatively unknown Rishi Sunak. Um, there was a bit of there's initially a, a negative response in the British pound uh, to to this news, but then tra then traders took the view, uh, Mr. Sunak is more likely um, to be kind of um, get to get on board with Prime Minister Johnson's plans, uh, and the kind of view is that you know Boris Johnson, Prime Minister of the UK, is keen to kind of have some sort of uh, kind of um, not to say stimulus package, but kind of you know look to kind of bring in quite pro business policies. Uh, the budget, the UK budget, is going to be announced next month. There's already talk that you know Prime Minister Johnson could deliver the uh, could deliver the Boris bounce um, tr through the um, through the through, through the budget. Uh, so so traders took the view that this is going to be good for the British economy. Uh, so we've seen a decent move to the upside in the um, in the British pound. Uh, what I'll do is I'll take a quick look at some of the major markets, starting off with uh, the pound versus the US dollar. I just talked about how we had a decent move. To the upside uh, in in the, in the pound. Uh, let's zoom in now. We can take a look at this. Take a look at yesterday's move. We had a very decent move to the upside on the pound versus the US dollar. We can see here that during the week the pound drifted lower. It got decent support from this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average. If we can continue to hold above that metric, the uh, the kind of more the kind of wider bullish trend could continue. And if we press on higher from here. And if we retake this blue line, the 50 moving average on pound dollar, we could look at retesting uh, the late or the early rather the early February highs in around the kind of one one spot 32 mark. And if we go beyond that, we can then look to target the, the highs uh, of late December in around one spot 3284. On the flip side, if we do have a move a move to the downside and we take out the recent lows, the lows in mid-February. It could take us back down towards this area here in around one spot 2768. Uh, the euro uh, had a pretty pretty poor uh, showing yesterday. Um, we, see, we seem to have seen broad weakness across the euro. It lost ground against the US dollar, the Japanese yen, the Swiss franc, and the British pound. Um, obviously, the British pound did quite well yesterday in relation to the political reshuffle, but there's kind of euro weakness across the board. Uh, so we've fallen. We're kind of unchanged on the day on euro dollar, but the euro is now back at a level last seen. The lows uh, of this, uh, these lows were last seen in May 2017. So it gives you an indication of how weak 
euro dollar is um we've been in a solid downward trend the last few sessions if this kind of downward trend continues we could be looking at targeting one spot zero eight any kind of rebounds in euro dollar could look to run could look to encounter resistance in around this area here in at one spot 0.925 and if you get a move beyond that we can then potentially head back up towards one spot 10 but it's you know between a lower low a lower high a lower low a lower high and yet a series of lower lows so it seems to me that we could be we're, we're clearly in a bearish move uh, at the moment i mentioned about how we had some kind of back and forth uncertainty in the uh, in, in in uh in global stock markets that you know that that being said um we're still probably in the broader upward trend of the last few months. This here is the FTSE 100. Um, this red line here is the 200 moving average, which we're still holding above. Uh, we're currently at 7,463. The 200 moving average comes into play at 7,366. So while we hold above that metric, the kind of wider upward trend of the last few months uh, is likely to continue. If you do press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the mid-February high in around 7,560, there thereabouts. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting 7,600. If the market does manage to turn lower again and it takes out the 200-day moving average, we could then be looking at targeting the, the lows of late January. Now, to be fair, the FTSE 100, given that it has high exposure to mining stocks and energy stocks and also you know a number of different companies that are connected to china um that is probably the probably one of the bigger underperformers uh of both european and u.s stocks so we're now taking a look at the dax it was only uh, it was only during the week that the dax was uh was setting set all time high so uh this was obviously during the period of time when it was felt that the just the health crisis in china was, was, was coming under control but now, since then, um, the view is that the the view is that the unfortunately the head crisis is actually getting worse. That being said, we have managed to recoup a lot of the ground that was lost yesterday, so we're still in a very much upward trend. Uh, if we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting thirteen thousand eight hundred. Uh, beyond that, you know, we could be looking towards thirteen thousand nine hundred, and then beyond that, the next big psychological number will be thirteen. Sorry, fourteen thousand. Any moves to the downside could find some support from this zone here in around 13,640 down towards 13,600. That kind of zone, uh, I've seen a bit of consolidation in, in the past, so it makes it uh, a likely candidate for a support zone um, uh, in the future should we see a decent uh, pullback. I'll take a look at what's going on over in the Far East on the Nikkei 225. It's in pretty good shape, but I am ever so slightly concerned about some of the, the, the price action that we've seen. So obviously we've seen a decent rebound uh, in, in, the, in, the Japanese stock, in, in the Japanese market. It's pretty much sitting above this blue line, the 50 moving average. And if it continues to hold above that, it's likely we could see further gains being made and heading up to, back up towards the kind of 24,000 mark. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the highs of mid-January. And if you go beyond that, we could make a target the highs of mid of mid December. I'm just ever so slightly concerned that we have seen, and it's not it's not, it's not a, a you know a textbook example of a downward trend, but notice how the highs of February failed to take off the highs of January, and the highs of January failed to take off the highs of February of December. The lows of January took off the lows of the lows of late January took off the lows of early January. So. You know, it could be a sign that we, the market could be turning over, but it's, you know, so if we do look to have a decent move below the 50 moving average, we could be looking heading back toward this area here, kind of the 100 day moving average in around 13,000, in around 23,173 down to 23,000 itself, the figure. And if we do take off that, we could then be looking at targeting the late January lows. Over in the US, things are looking. <laughs> Uh, same old story, same old bullish story. Um, US, US stock markets are racking up all time highs. Uh, we did see a bit of uncertainty yesterday, but things didn't actually finish too badly. Uh, we are, you know, we're, we're currently expecting the S&P 500 to open when cash trading gets underway around um, 3,382. So things are still quite strong. If we do have a pullback, support could be found from this zone here in around 3,000. 350 
And it's only really if I have like a very sizable pullback could we look to head back down towards 3,300. But you know, notice how how much the size of the gap between where the market currently is and its 50-day moving average. So I'll give you an indication of just how strong the S&P 500 is. Now, looking ahead to next week, some of the events to keep an eye on. Um, in the kind of first half of next week, we have some important reports from the UK. We have UK unemployment earnings, CPI and retail sales. We have Canadian CPI. We have the minutes from the latest Fed Reserve, Federal Reserve meeting where the, uh, the Fed kept uh, rates on hold, meeting expectations. We have the flash uh, manufacturing and service PMI reports from the, from the major European and uh, major European economies and the US. Uh, we have uh, results out, first half results from BHV Billiton, the mining company, HSBC, full year results, yeah, the bank. What's interesting about those two, uh, and also we have an update from Anglo American. They're all going to be in interesting because of China. The two mining companies have large exposure to China in the form of selling minerals, and HSBC drives a large portion of its wealth from the Far East. Uh, and speaking of banks, Lloyds have a, a full year figures out as well. And then also, connected to China, once again, we have first half, first quarter figures out from Deer Group, um, the machinery company crowd. Um, a large portion of their revenue comes from agricultural goods, and obviously the agricultural business in the US is closely tied in with China. I'll quickly take a look at Lloyds, uh, one of our more popular stocks. Uh, we can see here that Lloyds got a decent jolt to the upside in December on the back of the sizable Tory party victory at the UK general election. But since then, we've been hand to back, hand, we, we've, uh, we've been pressing lower. We're pretty much trading in around the 200 day moving average. If we continue to press on lower from here, we could be looking at targeting the uh, early Nove mid November lows uh, in around 55.4. And a move below that could take us back towards 52. Uh, if we do have a fairly size we move to the upside and if we go beyond 60 pence of Lloyds, we could head toward this zone here in around 64. I'll take a quick look at BHP, the, uh, the mining company. Like I said, BHP, uh, have been, their share price has been heavily dragged around by the per perceptions about the, the state of the Chinese economy. China is a major importer of minerals. Uh, BHP is a mining company. so. As you can see here, we've seen it, we've seen broadly speaking, it's been holding below this red line, the currently moving average, for quite some time. Obviously, it was above it in mid-January, but we're now comfortably below it. Uh, if we do continue to press on the lower from here, and we take off the lows of early February, we could be like heading back towards toward the kind of 16 pound zone, the lows of um, late October. But if we do manage to kind of press on higher from here, and we manage to fill this gap uh, that was created in kind of late January, we could be looking at getting back above. The 200 day moving average, and if we go beyond that, we could be looking at testing 18 pounds a share or potentially on towards uh, 18 pounds 72 last seen in mid January. Uh, I do appreciate the fact it's been a longer bit, one of the lot longer videos, but there's a lot of ground to cover. Thank you for bearing with me. Have a good trading week and good luck.